Hello and welcome back anybody, everybody, but probably nobody. This is Thor W and I'm here to bring you another episode of Let's Play Super Mario World. And I'm so excited, I'm bouncing in my chair because I love Super Mario World so much. So in our last one, we discussed a little bit about what kind of good game design evolves from stuff and how to ease the player into the game and, and slowly show new mechanics, which again, we're going to touch on that topic again. But for, for now, let's go ahead and jump into Donut Plains 1, which if you guys were paying attention is our first level with a red dot on it instead of a yellow dot. Now, why could that be? If you see this guy with a red cape, jump on him and you will get the feather upgrade. Unless you uh, jump on him with a spin jump, a spin jump will murder his butt. And the cape is amazing. The cape is OP and the strongest power-up in the game by far, which is why we want to. Goodbye, Super Koopa. As you can see, the cape deals with many, many adversities in the game, including enemies, projectiles, and uh, as we will see in uh, just a little while... Nope. Left, middle, right. There's a one-up. Get up there. Wow. Damn. We got a little bit unlucky. Left, middle, right, and left, right, middle were the only two. Oh, well. And we're back out here, but wait. Another pipe? Yes, there is. All right. Now it's time to see what the cape can truly do. And that is what this is specifically for. And the cape is able to fly. And honestly, you can pull up as much as you want. As you can see, I'm pulling up higher and higher. You can stay as low as... You can go lower, you can go higher, all that jazz. And there is a bunch of coins. This is what this room is entirely about. This room is about nothing more than, hey, did you know you could fly with the cape? Look at, look at, look at this. You can fly with the cape. You see all these coins you're getting? That's because you can fly with the cape. And that's all it's about. And, once again, very nice little way to ease the player into the mechanics. Now, uh, I, I understand that the difference between, like, what I'm talking about and uh, for you guys out there that are going to be content creators in the Mario Maker universe is the fact that in Mario Maker, you know, you got the one level to introduce your uh, player to your mechanics and stuff like that, instead of uh, multiple levels. But at the same time, you gotta, you gotta try and take some of these things into consideration. I mean, you can't, you can't just start off your level with the intensity of 50, unless it's a very short level, in which case, by all means, start your level off at a, a million if you want to. Why are you still jumping? You nerd, I jumped on your head. Oops, I got baseballed. Baseballed right in the face. Yoshi, hug me. I'm scared. By the way, I believe Yoshi will destroy this guy as well. Yep. Much like a spin jump, Yoshi will also completely annihilate things. Now then, this is a hint that there's more to this level than what we see if we uh, jump on this. Or jump off Yoshi. Well, we saw for half a second that there's, there's a little platform up there, and there's these little dotted green blocks telling us, hey, there's more to this level than what you can see right now. More than meets the eye, Transformers. Yeah, you wanna go? You wanna go, mate? Yeah, that's right. So, this is uh, the big, the first big hint that, hey, these red levels have multiple, multiple exits. Multiple exits. Multiple exits! So that's our normal exit, and it leads right to another red level. And it's an underground level, but let's go show off what that other exit actually is. Anyway, uh, these Koopas will respawn unless you destroy their main body as such. So we're going to do that. And then we're just going to cruise control our way through the level. And uh, truth of the matter is, you can do this for almost every level in the game. You can just, uh, Mario, you can just fly your way through so many levels. Bring and we're almost at the end. There's the end of the level. There's the key. See, there's the green blocks. 
Here's Mario handling this key. Look at him handle it, just passing it back and forth between his hands. Oh, and shoves it right in that keyhole. Oh, shove it right in the keyhole, Mario. Beautiful. That leads to another red level. So as you can see, there are lots of multiple diverging paths to, uh, to World 2 here, the Donut Plains. For now, we'll, we'll take the normal path. Anyway, these are, uh, what, what are those? Buzzy beetles, I believe? Yeah, those are buzzy beetles. Buzzy beetles and swooper bats. So, this introduces the mechanic of the little yellow things. Click, click, click. And it shows that they're nice and slow moving at a relatively set pace, other than when they switch directions, they kind of have a little bit of slowdown and, and a little bit of acceleration to get to their top speed, which is very, very slow. Their top speed of very, very slow. And there's a, there's a nice little uh, chill pacing to it. Even even the music is super chill right now. I mean, doom, doom, do, do, do. But we can go up that pipe, and that'll take us over to this area, to the football player. And we will see that, hey, there's an exit over there, but there's also a thing here. What could this be used for? Well, it could be used for that. Maybe that's what it's for. Or if you had a Yoshi, uh, you'd see that if you eat a blue shell with a Yoshi, he will sprout wings and he'll be able to fly. And by fly, I mean fly way better than with the cape. And there's our keyhole exit. Generally, your secret exits are going to have a key that goes into a keyhole. That's our secret exit, and it opens up the green switch palace. Very nice for us. So, ready? That guy grabs it and clicks it away. And he'll be stuck there forever if you want him to be. Have <laughs> a little bit of backtracking. Yeah, did you guys know that you could do that? You could grab things with Mario still in balloon form, and then you could click it out and jump back into balloon form. It, there's a lot of there's a lot of tricky things that you can actually do with the mechanics in this game, which we'll see in the ROM hacks. Oh, the ROM hacks. Oh, the ROM hacks. <laughs> Alright, so there's our green switch palace, nice and done. Uh, Mario looking pretty fly with that cape. Get it? Pretty fly? It's a cape. Ah, yeah, you guys love it. You guys love the puns. Alright, so let's go back to Donut Plains 2, and let's do this level, you know, the way it's meant to be done. And let's go finish it. The way it's meant to be done by spinning our cape endlessly. Are you guys are you guys liking it now? Are you liking it? Can you feel it, Mr. Krabs? Yeah, can you guys, can you guys feel that? If you guys can hear my button presses, then then I'm so happy. Cuz I am beating the shit out of my Y button for this. In case you guys are wondering, yes, I do actually own this on a Super Nintendo and everything like that. I have owned this game since the day I've had a Super Nintendo because, you know, it shipped with it. Like, Super Mario World is older than me. It's older than me, and I've had it since forever. Oh no, what will I do? I took a hit. I'll just grab it again. You know, it's actually been a really long time since I've done the, the normal route for this level. Normally you just jump in that green pipe, and if you follow the arrow that was there, it'll take you to a, to a normal exit. It'll take you right to a normal exit, and you'll just get out. Get out of the level and be perfectly fine. Click, click, click. So many clicks. Get wrecked, Buzzy Beetles. But, you know, sometimes sometimes you gotta go back and appreciate how the level's actually made. And I believe that one will murder you if you stay on it. Yeah, it will. Look at that. Mario's just looking like, oh my god. If I stayed on there, I'd be dead right now. And that's our final dragon coin. Yay! 
Yay, dragon coins! I believe you actually have to get five dragon coins on every level for like 100% completion. There's Spike Tops. Those are the first enemy in the entire game. Other than the, uh... So I guess not the first enemy. Because the spine... I'll, I'll count the spinies. But that's one of, one of the earliest enemies in the game that you're going to find that you can't actually jump on. Or kill with fireballs, either. Yay! <laughs> And that'll unlock Donut Plains 3, the Donut Ghost House. Or maybe it's just Donut Ghost House. Alright. Let's go ahead to the Ghost House. Ghost House works just like, uh... It works very similar to how, um... Oopsie. To how castles work. And that is, if you have Yoshi, you're just gonna leave him behind and go right in. Look at those ghosts. Ghosts like... These ghosts like to just dive bomb you. Well, I have done amazingly at this level. Did you see how amazing I did at that level? How I just got wrecked the entire time? Speaking of getting wrecked, I just, uh... There we go. So, this ghost house is a tiny bit of a puzzle. Ghost houses in Super Mario World are puzzle levels, basically. Uh, the way that works is you have to keep going through that door into that same room, and eventually that vine comes out. I think it's the second time you go through every time. I believe it's consistent that way. I believe it's consistent that way. But um, the first time you go, it's just going to give you a mushroom. Now, as you guys can see, I'm Tiny Mario. Nobody wants to be Tiny Mario. Nobody wants to be Tiny Mario at all. So let's go over here. Let's go grab ourselves a feather. And you can start select your way right out of a level. Doesn't cost you anything if you've completed it already. Perfect. So Donut Ghost House also has a secret. Yes, secrets abound. I believe almost every level in Donut's Plains has a secret. Fudge. Fudge monkey, that ghost activated. All right. How about this time we get two feathers just in case? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I should have played it safe and had two feathers. Alright, so if we get this guy off screen as we come back this way, he'll spawn again. There we go. Gotta be careful when you hit start select. Sometimes you'll hit if you hit select before you hit start, then it's going to uh, drop your drop your extra item out of that little box up there. Alright. Let's go over here. Come on, ghosty goose. Come and get me. And if you fly right up here, get to this walkway, which is only accessible through that left corner, that left corridor there. Otherwise, it just looks like there's a roof up here. And you drop down here, and you get ghost one-ups. Oh, no. Get away from me, ghost one-ups. I only want 30 lives. We're just going to walk our way through. I'm not going to necessarily get the, the tape as often as possible. Because the minigames do take, you know, a bit of extra time for not much. They're just a couple of extra lives. And that's going to open the top secret area. Now, what is the now the top secret area is going to be a place we visit once in a while. And uh, if you hit the left, these, these uh, fire flowers will come out. You hit the right, some feathers will come out. You hit the middle, Yoshi will come out. And literally, the top secret area is there. Nothing more than for your benefit. It's a it's a good job on finding that secret, and it'll it'll restock your supplies. That's all it's for. Just why I wanted it open, just in case. It's a nice speedy way to restock. And here we have our first water level. I think the water mechanics for uh, Super Mario World are actually better than a lot of Mario games, even some of the future ones. They're very very smooth controls. Boom boom boom. Also, you gotta you gotta love this the uh, the water theme waltz. All right, so this one is gonna introduce us to a new mechanic, the pea balloon, which makes Mario fat, filled with helium, basically, and he floats. We all float down here, Jimmy. We all float. 
And then he gets eaten by, by a horrible, horrible clown, played by Tim Curry. Stephen King's it. And a one-up up here, and another dragon coin. And uh, basically the whole point of this room is to get those dragon coins. We. I mean, you can get some other stuff too, but there's no, there's nothing much worth uh, looking at. It's just those two dragon coins and the one-up. Speaking of dragon coins, we got another one right here. Delicious dragon coin. Bum, 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 bum. Alright, so as you know, this is a red level. Which means there's a normal exit and a secret exit. Oh my. Whoops. Bye, Yoshi. Apparently I'm leaving you behind. I didn't actually mean to, but whatever. If you're holding something when swimming, you, you go so much faster. So much faster, as you can see. Okay, so there's actually, like, you can go through that that guy very fast. You can just spin right through him with a, with a cape. But it's it's a little dangerous. So guess what the P-Block's for? Is it for that? Yes, it is. But we're going to get the normal exit real quick. And then we'll come back for, for the P-Switch exit. We'll come back for our secret exit in just a little bit. And what happens when we take a P-Block through the tape? We get a 1-Up to spawn and fly off screen to the heavens! Never to be heard from again! Why did the 1-Up go flying into the sky? What? I've never had that happen before. I've done, I've done water levels where I took a P-Switch to the end before and have not had the 1-Up do that before. That's crazy. That's crazy. This has never happened to me before, guys. It's never happened to me before. I'll, I'm being exposed live on stream, even though this is recorded and not live. Alright, so we'll, we'll skip that pipe this time and take a look at what else is here. It's literally, you know, that. It, it, it's basically nothing. And that's, uh, that's something very good to, to think about. When you think of, like, pipe transportation in Mario and how far it's going to take your, your player through the level, generally you don't want to take, take them too far. You know, maybe take them a screen or two over. Something like that. But you don't, you don't gotta go crazy with it or anything. I did not spin my cape properly. As you saw. Oopsie. Well, like I said before, we may have to restock now and again. Get out of here, fishy. Look at these kissy fish. They want to kiss me. I'm out. Tiny Mario's out. See ya. And that's how we get to this ghost house that we've been seeing over there this whole time. Let's go restock our supplies real quick at the top secret area. So, as you can see, these will come out as mushrooms if you have nothing, but, you know, once you got a mushroom, they come out as your as your good items. Now, nor normally, you know, with uh, most Mario games, you're like, oh, if I have a restock, I, I might, like, one of this and one of that, one of that. In, in Super Mario World, almost all the time, the cape is king. The cape is just OP. Now, let's go hit this uh, this ghost house. Alright, so like I said before, ghost houses in Super Mario World are generally puzzles. And by generally puzzles, I mean they are puzzles. They are puzzling puzzles that puzzle you. And here we have a, a ghost ring, our first instance of a ghost ring. Ghosts just like to float around in circles because they're nerds. Okay, so this is if you can't fly or anything. You just get the spring, you jump right over, and then you give the, the finger to Big Boo. You're like, eh. But how do we get down there? The world may never know. It's a secret to everyone. So, boos work just like you'd think they would in Mario. Normal boos. That's our first normal boo, actually, to actually attack us. Oh look, that looks kind of like a door outline. That looks like a door with nothing there. Oh man. Oh, and a P-block. And a door. Well, what's this door going to do? It's going to take me back here. I've been bamboozled. Whatever shall I do? The ghosts, they're so tricky. 
See, these ghosts are tricky. They're very tricky. They know that it's tricky to rock a rhyme. To rock a rhyme, that's right, on time. It's tricky. Get tricky. Tricky, 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 yeah! Alright, so the coin outlines a door there. This door is just kind of floating in midair, and obviously you can't get to it. And then when you walk over here, you get a P block. So that tells you, hey, you know, hit the P block. Now you have your decision. Do you want the blue door or the normal door? Let's take the normal door. Where's that going to take us? It takes us to this coin snake. The way coin snakes work is that they create coins based on the last direction you pressed. So I just pressed right as my last direction there. Down, right, you know. Oh, oopsie. And that's how coin snakes work. And that's what that room's for, it's to teach you how coin snakes work, and give you a few extra coins if you want some. Now we're gonna hit this P, and now we're gonna try the blue door. Where's the blue door gonna take us? It's gonna take us to the exit. But which exit was it? Was it the normal exit? Or was it a secret exit? Is there even a secret? Ghost houses are a little bit harder to tell whether there's a secret, because there's actually no visual indication on whether there's a secret there or not. But if we're we're gonna go back in there and I'm gonna show you guys the secret. Because there's a secret. I'm sure you guys know about it. I'm sure everyone knows about it. Everyone's played this game by now, except maybe, you know, some little kids and stuff. And if little kids are watching this, then uh Hi! I hope you enjoy my content. I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope I'm not cussing too much for you. Probably am. I probably offended your parents and they made you turn it off already. All right. One thing to note in uh, in all the Mario's, including uh, this one and future ones, the way to uh, we're just gonna take that real quick. Hit select to bring that down. Beautiful. Anyway, in uh, in Mario's, in order to put down a uh, a spring trampoline thing when you pick it up after you pick it up, if you just duck down, it'll drop it right on the ground. I did not mean to do that. I accidentally hit the up button. My bad. And I do have to have a cape for this, so let's try not to get hit. In fact, let's uh, do this just to be sure. That way, if I do take a hit, I'll take a hit on something that doesn't matter, just a fire flower. Click, click, click. See, like I said. If I do happen to take a hit, you know, just out of nowhere, just not intentional or anything at all, you know, I'll just get rid of a fire flower. Alright, ghosty goose, I'm gonna take the P block and I'm gonna blink it right over here, and we have a secret door. Where will it lead? It will lead to Big Boo. This is a boss fight, as you can tell by the music. This is a secret boss fight, even. A very easy version of the secret boss fight. All you have to do is uh, throw up these blocks at him when he when he becomes corporeal. Oop. Three hits and he's done. You know, rule of three is very simple. And Mario's just ready to go. Very simple, very good. And that's, uh, that's our secret exit to that particular... Uh, house. And that's the first secret to actually, you know, provide much of a challenge for us, because it gave us a boss at the end. And that leads us to a place called Star Road. But what is Star Road? That's Star Road. It's a Star World. We'll hit that at some point in the future. We're not doing it quite yet. Alright, let's continue with the secrets of the donuts. Donut secret two. Oh, what, what was that down there? Was that Bowser's Keep? Why, yes it was. Coin snake. Give me coins. If you get the front coin, it will uh, it will disappear, by the way. So I wanted coins, so I'm just going to do that. Just to show you guys, yeah, coin snake. Yay, coin snake. Jump on the trampoline, and oh, what's that? Oh, there seems to be stuff up here. Oh my, but I don't necessarily want to leave Yoshi. Oh no, Yoshi. Starman. Come with me, Yoshi. We've got things to do. Including this. Including murdering these things.
Hey, so these little chompers normally hurt you? Yoshi can walk on them just fine. If you have a Starman, you can walk on them just fine. You might, re you might recall these things from, like, Super Mario Bros. 3. You little chompy guys. Alright, so this pipe we can go in. But, if you recall, when we were, uh... There's a pee balloon that you can get if you want. I don't really want to give up Yoshi, so I'm just going to kind of walk my way through here. This place is just meant for getting you a little bit of extra coin in your pocket. In case you want a few more coins or anything like that, it dumps you right back out here. And... one up. Beautiful. And no, you cannot go down that pipe. So, I missed a dragon coin. Where'd I miss it? Oh, right, I know where I miss it. Oh well. I can come back for it off-screen if I want to get all the dragon coins to get 100% completion. So as you can see, that's a yellow one. That's not going to take us anywhere decent. And that's going to loop us all the way back here to Donut Plains 3, where we're going to head towards, finally, head towards our castle, guys. So let's talk about, like, overall world design and the way that this works. We have two multiple paths to get us to the same ending, multiple different... Uh, multiple different diverging routes to get us to different areas overall. And uh, just tons of options available to us. Like I said before, this is, uh, this is what happens when you put a blue shell into Yoshi's mouth. Into his mouth hole. But, as with all good things, they do come to an end as Yoshi will eventually swallow it into his fat, fat mouth. Alright, so notice how that introduces you to this mechanic. The on-off switch. And it'll switch up your little, uh, rotation... Your little, uh, directions there. Fuzzies... I don't think I can eat fuzzies. Can I eat you, fuzzy? No, I can't. Get the same sound you get as when you, uh, try and eat a block. Boing. Boing. And nice little, nice little platforms to help you out if you fall down there. And this is a mini game, a little bonus mini game. We're gonna jump in for some extra life opportunity. Yeah, just make sure you don't jump out of the uh, the game area. More extra lives. We'll never run out of lives. We're at 38 already. Wow, we're at 38 already. I forgot how fast you can make lives in this game. Speaking of which... Alright, so going through that uh, bonus minigame did make me miss a dragon coin, but that's no big deal. Again, like I said, I'm not going to worry too much about dragon coins and whatnot. If I get them, I get them. If I don't, I don't. Oh well. No! <laughs> Fire flower, why? You ruined it! It was so perfect! Alright, well, that still gets us six. Make sure, you, make sure you're make sure you on Yoshi when you end the minigame. If you're not on Yoshi when you end the minigame, Yoshi will be gone. Aww. I missed three extra lives because of that. No, actually, I only missed two. But still. Oh well. Oh well. Alright, so Donut Plains 4. Once again, a yellow level. We don't got any secrets to worry about or anything like that. Just do the level. So here we have a yellow multicolor shell. What's this do? Well, a little bit of everything. It gives us the effect of all the different shells, for the most part. You got the flight of the blue shells, the stompiness of the yellow shells, which we haven't seen any normal yellow shells yet. And if we spit it out, fire of red shells. The one thing it doesn't give you is green shells, which spits the shell out as opposed to the fire. And the reason for that is that, hey, you, you grab the... Sh you, you spit out fire instead. I mean, you get, you want to complain about spitting out fire or something, man? You are literally a dragon. Bow. Bow. Rectum. that's another dragon coin for us. It's going to blast us off over here and completely skip that flying hammer, bro. 
And yes, that is a hammer bro, in case you guys are wondering. Hammer bros come in that particular form. They just sit up on those flying little platforms, and that's pretty much all they do. See? They sit up on those platforms and throw out hammers. Alright, so we've got some paratroopa goombas. Some paragoombas coming down. Now, if I recall, it's... Uh, where is it? There should be a secret thing around here. There it is, a moon in the sky. Now, what? what's a moon? What is it? It is three up. In case you guys were wondering uh, what that is, they are very, very rare in the game and very sparsely found. We're just going to fly over there. If you uh, pass the goal line, even if you don't get the tape, the, get the level will end in Super Mario World. Even if you're over it or whatever. Um... But yeah, those three ups are extremely rare. That's one of the best places to get it. Do Donut Plains 4, really. Alright, so, castle number two, Morton's Castle. Castles are actually one of the few places where I would suggest having uh, a fire flower over a cape. Ready? Let's go to our first secret. Oh, dang, I couldn't get it. The thwimps. Those are called thwimps, by the way. The big ones are thwomps, and the little ones are thwimps. Damn it. Got it. Alright, so there's a little secret there that you can uh, get up to. And that'll take you to this pipe. Into a bonus stage. Bing, 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 Alright, I'm sorry guys, I know that that must be annoying. Later, 1-Up, I don't need you anyway. Bye bye So, here we go. That skips us ahead uh, a room into this area. It makes it so we didn't have to deal with those ball and chain guys on the conveyor belt stairs back there. And here we have the, uh, the slow automated part of the castle. Dang it. In which case, in which you have to kind of kind of wait for the castle to move itself around, which is which is decent. Uh, it's not my favorite mechanic. I'm actually not a huge fan of mechanics like this. Boing boing. Specifically because you know it takes a while to get through stuff when you're when you're sitting here waiting for the level to kind of play itself out. Um, if any of you guys out there are fans of, like, self-playing levels and stuff, as I know some of you might be, might have seen some self-playing levels in Super Mario World hacks before, with, with like, set to music and stuff, yeah, some of that stuff. Because that stuff's super cool, by the way. I really like that stuff. Um, if you are going to do that, and you are going to make, like, some self-playing levels for people, seeing as you can't necessarily set it to music too well in the Mario Maker as it stands right now, but what you can do is make it move around real fast and make it kind of kind of scary for the player. Make it seem like, oh man, I might die if I I might die if I if I don't move, but oh jeez, I got to I got to I got to trust they said don't move. All right. So here's our boss, Morton Koopa. Come here, chubby guy. You kill him much like you kill um like, like you kill Boom, Boomy in uh, Super Mario Bros. 3. You just jump on him, jump on him, jump on him. Easy peasy. One, two, three, easy. Very easy. Uh, the seesaw, the seesaw boss Larry. I think he's he's much more difficult than Morton. And now we have one job left: to blow this castle to Kingdom Come, or because Mario's a boss, stomp it into the ground. <laughs> Morton Koopa Jr. of Castle Number 2 is now just a memory. The next area is the Underground Vanilla Dome. What traps await Mario in this new world? What will become of Princess Toadstool? Who knows? But, that is the end of World 2. And we have done everything there. So you can see a little bit of a, a little bit of land grew over there. If we take a look back there, a little bit of land grew. I believe if we hit... What is it? What, what, what button do I have to hit? There we go, if we hit start, it's actually start, huh. We can take a look around and look at the world map. And we can see there's World 1, which we defeated with Mario's house over there. Or or the Yoshi house or whatever. 
Here's World 2, the donut plains we just went through. We're going entering this area, the Vanilla Dome, as you can see it comes out this way or through that pipe. So there's multiple things out there to head towards the fourth castle. The, this little overworld towards World 4. Heads into this forest. You guys know it is the Forest of Illusion, World 5. Into World 6 over here, Chocolate Land. Which will then head us off into World 7. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. I coughed right in your ears, and I made you listen. I made you listen! <laughs> so, that's going to be the end of this episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching World 2 of Super Mario World. That was a tad bit longer than World 1, about three times as long as World 1. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for World 3 of Super Mario World as we continue discussing, you know, different video game design philosophies, what works, what doesn't, etc., etc., and we take on van the Vanilla Dome. So I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye bye everybody